Welcome everybody to the inauguration of Desde Las Raíces, From the Ground Up, our newest mural at BCC. As the mural's lead instructor and director, Tirso Araiza, will tell you in a few minutes, this was a product of a whole community effort to reflect the intercultural movements that formed the basis for City, Berkeley City College's establishment in the first place, and then for its growth. It reflects the historical legacies of the Native American, civil rights, disability rights, Black Panther, gay rights, freedom of information movements, and many more. It acknowledges that progressive public education is a central part and an essential part of a democratic society, and that the students are foremost in that social process. For this reason, the front panel of the mural focuses on the vibrancy and diversity of our student body. I wish to express my gratitude and pride to Tirso Araiza, to Eduardo Pineda, and the volunteers and students that made this latest edition of our public arts program such a jewel in our crown. Every year I'm amazed at the brilliance of our students and the many community members that have come forward to request murals and participate in their creation. As you may know, Berkeley City College now has a unique certificate of achievement in public art, as well as in art history, figure drawing, and an AA transfer degree in art, recognized both by the state system and the University of California system. In the last six years, BCC's True Colors Mural Project has created nine murals in the area including those at Mi Tierra Foods, Inkworks Press, the YMC Teen Center, the Realm Charter Middle School, four at Berkeley City College, and most recently, a new series of nine tile murals that will be inaugurated in December for the West Oakland Youth Center. I wanna call your attention just for a minute if you would turn around and look up here to what, a detail from one of those murals now hanging here in the atrium. This is the entrance on Market Street at the top of the arch on, at Bronkirsten Market in tile. But we have a wonderful um, digital printing department here that printed us this banner for this occasion. So I want to thank Joe and the Digital Arts Program. Through our classes in public art, we are bringing students into the communities and the communities into BCC. Our upcoming student project for next year will be at San Francisco State University with the Project Rebound uh, group that is, uh, works with formerly incarcerated university students. And that will be in uh, San Francisco State's Student Union. Thirsa will be teaching the design part of the project and I'll be teaching the mural execution part. I want to thank our students, colleagues, and administration and community partners, such as Berkeley's Youth Works Program, for providing opportunities for coming generations of student artists to bring visionary public works to our streets and our buildings. I'd also like to recognize Mayor Tom Bates, Lonnie Hancock, and um, Linda Mayo, who have been steadfast partners and supporters of our project all the way along. And now, yes. And now I'd like to hand the program over to Thirso Araiza and our students, who will give you a greater sight into the mural Desde Las Raíces, from the ground up. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Thirso Araiza. I'm the lead instructor for uh, the painting of this mural. Um, some people say that the painting um, speaks uh, for itself. Uh, and then why do we need to give any explanations when all is said and done? Uh, this painting is one of that kind, one of the paintings that speaks by itself, although it has a much history and many stories which could be explained in detail. Um, any viewer can come and see this mural and get some insights 
just from looking at it and understand the importance of our college and the political vision of our community, political activism and the educational wisdom of our institution. Um, also, this mural represents a tremendous collective effort by our students, the community itself, the, the, the staff that helped, came in our support when we were painting it. The mural design and creation class is a two semester long course are responsible for the production of many of the murals that now adorn many walls in the East Bay. And now these walls in this vibrant center of student activity. The first team of students, the design team, met at the beginning of the fall 2013 semester to create a mural proposal that would architectonically fit in this space. Together with their instructor, Eduardo Pineda, here, um, created a few proposals that were submitted for approval to our administration. From these designs, one was chosen for these walls and for the spring 2014 class to execute as the monumental painting that you see here. So you can see that this, pro the product of, this mural is the product of a year-long process that involved many participants, not only students and instructors, but also the wider community. The mural was enriched by the interactions with the viewers while we were painting, while we were in the process of painting. Many people came to see what we were doing, offered suggestions, comments, and gave us their enthusiastic support and their deep insights. The task of representing the tremendous achievements of our college and community in a painting is not an easy one. I personally felt insecure about the project. The students enrolled in the class were not professional artists, and none of them had had the experience of creating a monumental painting before. So I, I had to remember two quotes from other artists. The first one was from Degas, who said, painting is easy when you don't know how, <laughs> but very difficult when you do. We all started the project with a level of fear, but we were ready to confront it. The second quote comes from Francis Ford Coppola, who said in an interview, an essential element of any art is risk. If you don't take a risk, then how are you going to make something really beautiful that hasn't been seen before? So together, we took the risk. Thank you. I'm uh, Rob Gibson. I was the TA, one of the TAs for thank you for the uh, class last semester. Um, and I'd like to thank uh, all of the families and friends for the support that made the mural possible. And thank I'd like to thank the volunteers, the volunteers from the Bay Area art community who came in and uh, really made this, uh, this look amazing and professional and it's uh, just uh, very, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, and then also thanks to the True Colors for creating the family which uh, with connections that last and will inspire so many future projects. And um, thanks to Berkeley City College for the faith to see this mural come alive and the students and staff, faculty of BCC for all the encouragement throughout the process. It was really important to have uh, students and teachers and security guards and everybody uh, come by and just um, show support and give input and um, it was very much a community effort and um, it couldn't be done without you know everybody here thank you
Hi, my name is Dante Kaleo. Um, before I start, I just want to say thank you to all my peers, all the students who work really diligently in this class, to my teachers, to everybody who's involved, and I just want everybody to give themselves a hand for coming out today to support this project. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when we started this project, it was a huge challenge, just communicating and facing it's an elaborate idea, because like Tioso said, we, it took, it's a year-long project. We came in here not knowing any idea of what this is going to be, and we walked away feeling like we created something that represents what the city means to us. And it's really challenging. We, I work, we work with a huge group of people of all different ages, colors, backgrounds, totally different thoughts, totally different idealisms, and coming together and culminating, oh, excuse me, culminating an idea of what we feel the city represents, what we feel the school represents, was a huge challenge. But to see this today, we have history, we have the present, and we have the future. We have all these things to look forward to, and we hope this mural can inspire people who come to the school for years to come. And we hope we can have people come here and learn things that they haven't seen before, and open their eyes up to a place that we truly see as beautiful, and just to acknowledge all the rich history that this place has. So thank you guys very much. Hey guys, um, my name is Vivian Allen. Um, as a participant and an artist in this mural, and I take, when I take a look at it, um, it's hard to believe that a lot of us didn't have experience with um, painting a mural before. And with recognizing that, something that comes up for me is um, all, of our, all of our willingness to learn throughout all of it. Um, in the first semester with Eduardo, we were learning about different artists and just the history of murals and artists that like created revolutions with their art and I feel like that's what we did here at Berkeley City College is that we we took a stand for what we wanted to be on the wall and although you know we we did our best to um, you know stay true to what to what everyone agreed upon I think um, that willingness to learn just took us all the way through to this final product that is um, it's just breathtaking for me, and I'm just so, so grateful for everyone who's come out and everyone who's passed the mural, everyone who comes through these doors is able to witness exactly what Berkeley City is for us, for students um, who, are, who are entering the college and who are leaving. I know I have a lot of friends who are transferring out this semester, and I think um, it's just such a, a gratifying thing to finally see this up on the wall. And, um, I'm so grateful to Tirso and Juana and Eduardo and all of my classmates um, because we did it. We did it together and um, it's just been amazing. Hi everyone. Good evening. My name is Natalie. I'm a student here at BCC. Um, I've been part of the art program for over a year now and began the project with um, these amazing people, amazing artists, community members, activists. and. As you can see, a lot of the um, intention is infused in the walls now with the paint and that this um, type of work came out through the experiences, the lived experiences, the context where we live, it's all in the walls. So it's really amazing to know that um, a lot of the messages came across. I want to say thank you to all the instructors, everybody in the art department, um, everybody at BCC, the administration that holds it down, to the uh, community volunteers that came through to paint as well, a lot of thanks. Um, and just also that uh, I really like one time we were talking that sometimes um, the walls will retell the story that wasn't told and I think that that's really powerful and it's also very inspiring for a new generation of artists to speak their minds and to be able to communicate those histories that have been um, in the shadows, so I think that that's the only message I wish to share and that I'm really proud, so thanks guys. Hi, my name is Heather Rainey. I'm so happy this day has come to share a year of work among a group of talented, spirited, passionate artists and activists under the instruction of these wonderful men, Tirso and Eduardo. Um, I feel so fortunate reflecting because this is the third mural that I've had the fortune to be able to participate in creating here at BCC. Um, it's such a blessing that this program exists and is here for students to be aligned in ethical community. Like, we're painting for peace. Um, 
This mural was one of deep challenges, capturing 40 years of Berkeley's movements and revolutions required digging through the archives. And I just hope this mural is one of many that will continue to be birthed in this beautiful, intentional community created by Maestra Juan Alicia. This program gave me the opportunity to heal my life through art and discover my mission. I'm currently a student at CIIS in San Francisco with a focus in art therapy. May spaces continue to be created to bring all walks together, changing our communities through art. Thank you. So I want to thank everybody uh, for listening and turn the program back over to Dr. Debbie Budd, our president. Thank, thank you, you, Debbie. Thank you, Juan Alicia and Tierso Arisa. Congratulations. I welcome you all to finish your drink and your food and, be, and invite you to the next part of our program in the auditorium. We have some incredible music, uh, student stories, and gifts. So we welcome you to join us in the auditorium. Thank you. I'm Dr. Debbie Budd, president of Berkeley City College, and we are thrilled you are joining us this evening for our 40th anniversary. We have about a half hour program and we have wonderful music with our baby grand piano. So we're looking forward to those in the atrium coming in to join us. Um, before, I, uh, before we get to the entertainment portion, I just want to let you know a little bit more about Berkeley City College and the students that we serve. We originally, as you know, we're celebrating our 40th anniversary, but many of you say, they say, wow, I didn't know Berkeley City College was there for 40 years. We started as a Berkeley Learning Pavilion, then became the Peralta College for Non-Traditional Study, then we were Vista College, Vista Community College, and in 2006, we moved into this building and became Berkeley City College. Since that time, we now serve 7,000 <coughs> students per term. And we have the highest transfer rate of any community college in the nation to UC Berkeley. Yeah. And we are number two in the state of the 112 community colleges and our transfers to the Northern California UCs. UC Davis, UC Santa Cruz, and UC Berkeley. In addition, we have a wonderful associate degree for transfer program where 14 of our 14 of our degrees students can automatically transfer to a California State University in that degree or something similar. We would not be here though without all of the people that have dedicated their time and effort over the years. I would like to first acknowledge John Holloman and Paul Elsner, who were some of the original administrators with the Berkeley Learning Pavilion and the Berkeley <laughs> Dino, who I think will be here shortly, was the president of Vista College and one of the key leaders in having Berkeley City College built. In addition, this evening we have Ione Elliott joining us and Percy Young. Thank you for your never-ending dedication. Thank you. So in addition to the incredible transfers to our local schools, in, in addition to UC Berkeley, students go to Cal State East Bay, San Francisco State, Mills College, UC Davis, Stanford, and as far away as Harvard and Columbia. We also have incredible career technical education programs. We have many students that come after completing their four-year degrees for our STEM programs and go into the biotechnology field. We have many students that come for our health and human services programs and go out and help in social services. We have a great Spanish medical interpreter program as you, you, will, you saw outside with our mural. And you will see tonight incredible student talent in multimedia arts, students that begin here and go on to do wonderful things in the world. I'd like to now just introduce our elected officials and say thank you so much for coming tonight. <coughs> Representing Congresswoman Barbara Lee, we have Caitlin Goodman. We have Senator Ron. <laughs> 
I'm here for, and we have Assembly Member Nancy Skinner. We have Mayor Bates, whose selfless work and dedication is truly what made Berkeley City College possible, and representing Mayor Bates and I, Sabrina Aguirre. We have our Peralta Community College District Board of Trustees, uh, Trustee Nikki Gonzalez Yuen. the members of the city councils and boards of education of Berkeley, Emeryville, and Albany to please stand and be recognized. Thank you, Thank you so much for your tireless work. Now I'd like to introduce our Chancellor, Dr. Jose Ortiz. Very much. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I never thought I'd see the day that I'd come up, celebrate the anniversary of a college that's actually younger than I am. <laughs> Makes me a little squirrely, I guess. But I do want to uh, thank Dr. Bud for her great leadership here at Berkeley City College. She's done a fantastic job. <laughs> I want to also thank all of you here, not only for coming out, but for supporting what we do here at Berkeley City College and at the Peralta Colleges. This is, in my estimation, I've been in community colleges about 35 years, and I think we're at a historic juncture where community colleges, not only are we being recognized as the future of this nation, and certainly the future of this state in creating a workforce and teaching our young people to be part of a thriving economy as we move forward into this 21st century. But right now, the community colleges, luckily for us, I believe, we're not, we're not a solo act. We're not working alone. We have actually come to a place where we're collaborating with our K-12 school system, we're collaborating with our four-year institutions, and what that means to me is that our students are going to have the best experience from even pre-kinder to higher education, post-secondary education, where all of us will benefit from their success. And the completion agenda that came from Washington a couple of years ago Actually, in my estimation, California was first, Assemblywoman Skinner. We were first on that completion agenda. Congratulations. And, and it is clear we are going to be at the forefront of granting degrees for the community colleges. We have certainly associate degrees and certificates, but we are now embarking into four year baccalaureate degrees. We hope that the Peralta Colleges get the opportunity to offer one of those degrees. I know Dr. Bud is pushing that agenda for Berkeley City. And I just feel privileged to be part of this community college experience at this time in our history. So I want to thank you all for supporting Berkeley City College, for supporting the Peralta Colleges. We're all in this together. And I know we will be successful. So I want to thank you. I know, uh, I think Tom Bates left. Is he gone? But I want to take a moment to thank Tom for his support. And before I go, I want to acknowledge my lovely wife, Carmen, who's here. <laughs> She's the one that said, I cannot get out of the house unless I bring her with me. So here she is. <laughs> Thank you very much. I also see that our um, police chief of Berkeley has just arrived. Mike, thank you very much for coming. And in addition, from um, Keith 
Carson's office. We have Haley who will be presenting later tonight. Thank you. Now, I'd like to introduce you to an individual who helped make this evening possible. Dr. Karen Weinstein is the chair of our 40th anniversary <coughs> committee. Many of you are here this evening and have donated to the Friends of Berkeley City College thanks to her incredible work. One day I received an email from Karen saying, I'd like to come check out your college. I was so excited to have the opportunity to meet with her and share the stories of many of our students. From that time, she said, how can I help? We can't thank her enough for all of her work, and she has made <coughs> such a difference in this event. Thank you so much, Karen. shown fantastic leadership, so thank you so very much. I am so honored to be chair of this 40th anniversary celebration. Um, I want to thank the people who are on the, the faculty, the staff, the students who are on the planning committee. Are any of them in here today? Thank you. Let's give them a round of applause. So I do want to thank the donors and the sponsors for coming forward. Um, Berkeley is always very generous, and, and Berkeley City College and myself are very appreciative of that. You know, when I came here and uh, Dr. Bud said that I'd spoken with her, I first came to the college and I sat in the atrium for a while by myself and just got a little bit of a feel for the college. And you know, this place is beautiful. The architecture is beautiful. The rooms are beautiful. And I was very impressed with how light it was and how welcoming it was. But I was even more impressed with the students who come here. They are an impressive group of people. Um, Berkeley City College represents hope and opportunity. And I know the city of Berkeley has made a commitment to make sure that all students have a good education, starting in early education, moving up middle school, high school, community college, regular four-year college, and also graduate school. And we are so pleased about that. Berkeley City College is just doing a terrific job. Um, I want to also say that it was a real treat for me to uh, meet the veterans at the Veterans Resource Center. Are there any veterans in here this afternoon? Oh, OK. Hello. <laughs> You know, we want to thank you for your service. It, it, it means a lot to us, and we're glad that you're here now receiving the education that you want and a good education. Um, students are so diverse in this college. They come from all different backgrounds, all different ages, all different interests, all different countries, and um, cultural backgrounds. And it's what makes Berkeley City College so exciting. And it's what made me feel very inspired about this place and very excited to be involved in this celebration. You know, um, the landscape of education has changed. And President Obama has made the community college a centerpiece of his goal to have the best educated, most competitive workforce in the world. And our second lady, uh, Dr. Jill Biden, who is a community college teacher, she also says, that community colleges are unsung heroes and that they're the best kept secrets. Well, they're not the best kept secret anymore because I think Berkeley City College and all the community colleges have come into their own and we are very proud of the work that they're doing. I will say, however, that um, in terms of funding, it seems that on a per student basis, most higher education funding goes to four-year colleges. And we really want to see that change. And it is changing now in the state of California. And I hope that that continues to happen. So today, we have a terrific program. I hope you can just sit back and enjoy yourself. We have Dr. Mobley, who is going to be doing, um, has designed the music piece. And it is really uh, extraordinary. 
We hope that we can develop a music performance program here so that we can get back to the community, so that during lunchtime, people from the downtown can come here and listen to the music. The downtown Berkeley is uh, having a renaissance, and we want to be part of that renaissance. So I want to thank you again. We have a lot of terrific programs here in Berkeley City College, and it's been an honor for me to work with the people and the staff, the faculty, and the students. So thank you very much. So we are thrilled to have our elected officers be here. So if they want to come up, uh, Assemblymember Nancy Skinner, Caitlin Goodman, who is from Congresswoman Barbara Lee's office. We're sorry that we've missed Lonnie Hancock uh, and uh, Tom, Mayor Tom Bates. Um, and we also have a representative from Keith Carson's office. Oh, oh, please, come on up, Spada. <coughs> Say a few words. Well, thank you, Karen, for putting this event on. Thank you, Chancellor Ortiz and uh, Dr. Bud for your leadership for our community college system. And thank you to the trustees and all of you for coming, because it is a great day. I have been in Berkeley uh, for longer now than um, the uh, anniversary that we're celebrating. I don't always admit that. <laughs> um, and I remember when it was before Vista College, it was, I mean, our, our effort to do the community college here in the city was a little bit in some storefronts here and there, and it really seemed somewhat like an afterthought. And then Vista College, you know, grew and bloomed, and it was much more than an afterthought. But now we have a real community college thriving. And as Dr. Bud mentioned, yes, yes, yes. over 7,000 students and some incredible programs. You notice that we have a sign language interpreter here. Berkeley City College was one of the first schools to really develop a program in American Sign and train many, many people in this language, a very important language. So thank you for signing for us today. Um, you mentioned it, but uh, Mayor Bates recently uh, joined up with, the, with our City College and some others to put together this um, pathway, Berkeley Pathway to College, which is bringing our middle school kids and our high school kids into the college setting so that they can see the potential, they can see what it lies ahead for them. Because we know even in a community like Berkeley, we still have very, very many of our children that either don't complete high school or once they complete high school, don't pursue further education. Now we know that college isn't necessarily for everyone, but the, but the role of the community college is far more than your traditional sort of academic degree. It has vocational uh, pathways. It has career opportunities. And obviously, Senator Hancock, who I'm uh, also subbing for, she could talk to you in great detail about the type of career pathways that she's fought so hard for and carried legislation for that are now placed here, um, and, as well as our other community colleges. So there's just so many programs, and it's for every age, meaning of, uh, well, high school on, right? Every age, and regardless of where you are in life. Because we know that there's many people who are already have families and doing full-time jobs, but never did get a degree, and now there's a program here, which is one of the largest programs at City College, right? What's it called? The uh, Program for Adult College Education, PACE. And it is designed exactly for those folks of us who are already work, working full time, are already well into our adulthood, but want to get that college education. And so now PACE is one of the largest degree giving programs within uh, City College. So I'm very happy about that. And Senator Hancock and I have this lovely resolution um, that we would like to present to Dr. Budd on this 40th anniversary thing. Hello everyone, my name is Isabel. 
ago, and I'm here on behalf of Senator Lonnie Hancock, who unfortunately had another commitment and had to step out. Um, here to congratulate Berkeley City College for its 40th year anniversary and very excited to keep working on career pathway education and funding and to continue to provide our students the assistance that they need in terms of educational programs. Um, the senator is a, uh, has been a continuous supporter of community colleges and we look forward to another 40 years. Thank you so much. Hi, good evening. I'm Caitlin. I'm with Congresswoman Lee's office. Unfortunately, she could, she could not attend tonight, but she has asked me to present a certificate on her behalf. So, presented to Berkeley City College, in recognition of your 40th anniversary, we applaud your commitment to providing East Bay students with quality and affordable education. We thank you for your hard work and wish you continued success in the future years. Thank you. My name is Haley Leite. Um, I actually used to go to Berkeley City College, but um, <laughs> okay. So I'm actually um, representing Supervisor Keith Carson's office tonight. He was out of town, so he was unable to make it. So good afternoon, Berkeley City community. I'm very excited to be here and celebrating the anniversary of the school I transferred from. This public institution has enriched the, the lives of individuals to achieve a higher education and to prepare them for the workforce while supporting development throughout the Bay Area community. As an ambassador alumni and on behalf of Alameda Supervisor County Keith Carson, office I, where I'm actually a finance and economics intern now, I would like to congratulate the Berkeley City College community and staff on its 40th anniversary. Thank you. Hi, good, e good evening, everyone. My name is Spede Viveros Walton. I am the mayor's senior aide. I staff him on education and health. Um, the mayor and the senator were actually here, but they have to go off to another engagement. But um, Berkeley City College is really sort of fitting that it's in Berkeley. The, the history of Berkeley City College is truly one of struggle. Um, all these different iterations, um, all these different uh, transformations have you know, come to fruition what we see right now. Um, when the mayor was an assembly member, um, he was here through every single one of those, and he was a champion for this campus to have a home. And so this is what we see here tonight. And so on behalf of Mayor Bates and on behalf of the whole Berkeley City Council, um, we want to congratulate everyone that made happen, that made this happen, and the current leadership that has seen this college truly thrive. So congratulations. I can proudly say that I have completed um, the pathway. I recently graduated from Oxford University. Uh, prior to that, I was at Berkeley City College um, for two years and then had the chance and privilege to transfer to Stanford, um, from which I received the Rhodes Scholarship. And um, I'm always reminded that I do come from very humble beginnings. Uh, Wherever I go, I always am reminded that I ultimately am a product of this community college. I'm a product of the California Community College system. And for this, I want to thank every single person who made this happen, um, including my counselors, professors, um, and all of the administrators and fellow peers. I asked myself the question today, what would happen if Berkeley City College had not been here 40 years ago? Where would I have been if this college was not instituted? If Mayor Bates, the community at large, the educators did not struggle and fight to implement and to create this establishment, where would the transformation be? You see the end product now, and that is a, a, a Tibetan American Rhodes Scholar. But most people don't see, sorry. But most people don't see the work in progress. And that work in progress is a story of struggles. When I arrived in this country, um, I had gotten political asylum um, and had gotten refugee status here in America. 
As an immigrant, there were many struggles that I did face, and one of them was to adaptation. I went to three different high schools, and I actually didn't perform well. My natural state, as most of my friends would say, is that I'm a natural extrovert. But I had actually learned to become an introvert because I felt alienated. I felt a lack of sense of belonging. And to overcome that, Berkeley City College was actually my first home. Berkeley City College was the first home where I was able to meet with fellow peers and have a circle of friends who enabled me and not disabled me. So that's why I am so honored to celebrate this day here with you all today, because I believe that what is unique to America and what is especially unique to California is its community college system. I have been and lived in many places, some that I don't want to, and one thing that America has is its co community college system. The fact that I was able to have an opportunity to come here, to arrive in this country, and to get an education. The fact that my father was able to do the same, and the fact that my children will be able to do the same. Three generations can have access to viable education only exists in the United States of America, my friends. I believe that change is best when it's bottom up. Change is best when people come together on the ground. And at community college, at Berkeley City College, I experienced that change. The two things here that I will never ever be able to replace is the preparation that this community college offered me and the mentorship that it offered me. In terms of preparation, I remember coming into classrooms and the first day being puzzled because I could not and was not able to write a complete essay. And I remember some of my professors would sit me down and with the tutoring center and I learned how to complete sentences. That is where I was at. And within two years of that, within two years of persistence and absolute determination, I was able to write essays with ease. I was able to think critically. That is the preparation that till to this day has led to an honors and distinction in both Stanford and Oxford. That is the preparation that I was able to get at a community college. And for that, I'm always grateful. Second is mentorship. We all know that it really does take a village to support and enable a student. And at Berkeley City College, I found invaluable mentors. One such is Victor Flint, without whom many of us in this room, and we all know who we are, would not be able to call ourselves the diamond in the rough. Victor, like many other counselors and mentors I have come across here, have really been able to champion my voice, and beyond that, give me a voice, and hear my voice. And for that, I'm also very grateful. Thank you, Victor. <laughs> Berkeley City College taught me that it was more than just the environment, it was also the expectations that people held of you that were equally important. Most people say that we're products of our environment, but I will argue that we are as much products of our expectations. And when I entered this college the first day, I had high expectations of myself. And I believe that the people around me also held those high expectations and made sure that I met them. Today, I met many of these people. I reconnected and I thanked many of them for making sure that my expectations were met. I believe that Berkeley City College can be a pioneer and champion and also raising the expectation of every student by bridging the administration and staff, professors, with its students. And I believe that one thing that Berkeley City College has that no other institution, whether it was Stanford or Oxford, was able to provide me with was the diversity. We talked about this before. It was the diversity of the student population. I could sit in a class and have a spectrum. I could be in a class and have someone who is returning after 50 years of working 
and yet have on the right hand side a student who just graduated from high school. And we were forced to collaborate with each other. We were forced to build partnerships with each other. And I have never ever been able to witness or experience that at any other institution. So Berkeley City College, although we have done much in these 40 years, there is still much more work to be done and I am positive that with the right attitude, every single one of us can take the responsibility and move forward. So congratulations and here's to another 40 years. Thank you. Thank you um, students who spoke. I do absolutely want to thank Victor Flint for helping organize the ambassador program back in 2006 and really working together this last uh, summer as we brought back our ambassador alumni to really ensure that community and the peer mentorship that we help the students realize they can do it. I also want to thank my administrative team because without their help we wouldn't be able to offer the incredible programs that we have at Berkeley City College. First I'd like to um, thank Dr. Mei Chen, our Vice President of Student Services. Thank you. I'd like to thank our Vice President of Instruction, Tram Vo Kumamoto. Thank you, Tram. Our Deans of Students, Dr. Carlos Cortez and Antonio Barrero, as well as Dean Brenda Johnson. And we have a couple of fantastic directors, a director, Mustafa Gauss, di yes. uh, director, Catherine Bergman, and, and Shirley Slaughter, who was our director of business administrative services and really responsible for the incredible team that keeps this college so wonderfully clean and welcoming to everyone. We have one more piece of the program before we go out for champagne and cake, and that is some incredible music. I am really thrilled to introduce you this evening to our new faculty member, Dr. Aaron Mobley. Doc In a moment, he will introduce our performers. Dr. Mobley joined us after receiving his master's from Carnegie Mellon in computer science and his doctorate in music composition from University of Arizona. I think you will see this evening why we are so thrilled that he is here to help us build our music program and really help enrich the lives of our students and the entire community. So Dr. Aaron Mobley, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Budd, distinguished guests, friends, visitors, faculty, students, most importantly. I know there are a number of people here that uh, have already been um, welcomed and acknowledged. We're going to try to move it along a little bit, if that's OK with everybody. Um, I know there's been a lot of formality. I hope you enjoy this part of the evening. We're going to have um, a number of pieces that you will enjoy, which will range from uh, African-American spirituals, art song, to chamber music. Uh, we have duo camaraderie, uh, beginning first with the third movement of a piece by Aaron Copeland. Next, we will follow with Lorenzo Ramsey, a wonderful tenor, myself on piano performing The Blind Man Stood on the Road and Cried, followed by a piece of mind for a solo flute entitled Geometrics. And last, we will follow up with a tons lead by Korngold, a composer that probably nobody's heard of unless you are a film aficionado from the 1940s. Anybody? Hey, there we are. So we need some Korngold fans, very rarely seen in tournament play. Welcome. And one of the things about the program tonight that's really interesting that I, I, I hope um, you may have noticed, but if not, uh, I will underscore, is that all of the music you'll hear here tonight is by American composers. American composers, the universal language, please do enjoy without any further ado, duo camaraderie performing Aaron Copeland. Thank you. 
that we will hear is a composition by H.T. Burleigh, who is um, a relatively obscure American composer, although he did contribute over 200 pieces to the canon of art song, and particularly African-American art song. The piece that we're going to listen to, uh, The Blind Man Stood on the Road and Cried, is inspired from the account of, which you may recall in the New Testament, of Jesus miraculously healing blind uh, Barnabas. And he comes and says, Lord, I've been healed. And this is the story in a different context. So I do hope you enjoy E.T. Burleigh and the blind man stood on the road and cried. <laughs> 